आता आपल्या सेशनचं सगळ्यात महत्वाचं जे आहे जो पार्ट आहे तो डॉक्टर नेरुला हे करणार आहेत आता ह्या पण आलेल्या आहेत सरोदा मॅडम पण आलेल्या आहेत काही हरकत नाही पण मी नेरुलांची इंट्रोडक्शन थोडंसं एक एक दोन वाक्यांमध्ये करून देतो की इज अ रिअली ॲट फार तसं ते यंग आहेत आणि एक इंटरनॅशनल लेवलला त्यांचं फार चांगलं काम आहे वर्किंग विथ हू युनेस्को आणि मोठ्या ऑर्गनायझेशनमध्ये ते काम करतात अर्थात ह्यांचे ह्या सगळ्यांच्या गुगलला इन्फॉर्मेशन असतातच सो मी त्यांना ते सेंट्रल कमिटी जे आहे ह्युमॅनिस इंटरनॅशनल एक्झिक्युटिव्ह डायरेक्टर जे आहेत ते नेपाळचे आहेत बेसिकली पण त्यांचं जे शिक्षण वगैरे आहे हे नेदरलँडमध्ये झालं आहे सो अगेन ज्यांचं ज्यांचं मराठीमध्ये आपलं स्पीच झालेलं आहे या सगळ्यांना इंग्लिशमध्ये आम्ही उपलब्ध करून देऊ सब टायटल्स वगैरे ओके प्रसन्न जोशींनी सांगितलं एकच मुद्दा थोडासा पुन्हा क्लिअर करतो की त्याच्या आपल्या जाहीरनाम्यामध्ये आपण बुद्धिप्रामाण्यवादी विवेकवादी संशयवादी जडवादी यहवादी मानवतावादी आज्ञेयवादी मुक्तचिंतक अशा अनेक स्पेक्ट्रम घेतल्या आणि ह्या सगळ्यांचं एक संघटन व्हावं आणि या सगळ्यांनी एका ह्याच्या खालती यावं असं ते आपलं आहे सो ती फ्लेक्झिबिलिटी आपण सर ठेवणार आणि जो थ्रेड आहे त्याच्यामध्ये जातीचा विषय आणि हा तो आपण डेफिनेटली इलिमिनेट करण्याचा आपण प्रयत्न करू सो तुमच्या सजेशन बद्दल आभार आणि आता मी आमंत्रित करतोय आपल्या आजचे चीफ गेस्ट मिस्टर उत्तम निरला डॉक्टर निरला प्लीज वेलकम गिव बिग हँड Good afternoon, everyone. Especially, uh, thank you, Kumarji. Uh, all our guests here, Alkazi, Prasannaji, Avinash Patelji, uh, Asimji, uh, Professor Nayak, from whom I have learned a lot in my life, and also Mahajanji, who has been helping me a lot, uh, especially uh, in many ways. And all the intellectual participants of uh, this Uh, atheist conference i'm so proud to be here because it it is the i have been to india many times but it is the first time of this kind like meeting this kind of people in my life in india especially generally while i go to uh, indian you know uh, various programs we are less discussing about we are we are having less dialogue but more speeches are there but this program is organized in such a way that there is more dialogue which is very important because that gives us more idea about what's happening in india and how we can collaborate also i'm very proud to come to india in comparison to other countries in the world because this is the land of charvaka and this is the land of bhagat singh as well and this is the land of ambedkar and this is the land of mahavir and buddha those are the people who understand is inspiring figure to promote humanism and atheism in the world globally these people represent a unique space you cannot find a second country where such a bonding such a such a mixture of humanist people in ancient is uh, can be found this is only this land so it's it's a land of proud for the humanists and atheists in the world there is a institute called american humanist uh, institute and they have a crash course for uh, humanism and the first thing they teach is the ancient humanist people must be charvaka and gautam buddha at least so this movement the philosophy of humanism and atheism is not western idea it means it's our idea and it has evolved from us we have to be very proud of it those people who are saying it's a west western idea th- are the people who doesn't really know who they are they doesn't really know what is their root so we are the one who are in the root of our own ancestors we are promoting our values we are promoting our moralities so we have to be very proud of it i would like to introduce a humanist international briefly because i'm working there as an international ambassador and i was also a member of the board we are uh, there are nine people uh, from different countries who represent the board and we are the two uh, international ambassadors uh, who are actually fostering the idea of uh, humanism uh, to different countries 
Humanist International is actually uh, working in major issues. It is the only umbrella organization of all humanist, rationalist, free thinkers, atheists in the world. So we officially represent more than 72 countries. And unofficially, there are many other organizations. Like in Pakistan, we cannot officially represent there. So there are some groups. So we are working with them. Let's say in Iran, let's say in Russia, we have some groups there, but we cannot officially represent them. We have been campaigning for the right of uh, humanists and atheists. I'm sure you have been seeing a lot of news about prosecution of humanists and atheists in the world. So-called biggest democracy in the world, this uh, country, India, has been, I think, uh, in the focus of international humanist movement because some great legendary uh, humanist personalities uh, uh, from India has been prosecuted, they have been you know, brutally killed and they have been put in the uh, like target, they have been targeted so badly. Whenever I talk to Professor Narendra Nayak, he's always, always saying, I hope I will, I will live longer. These people will not come and shoot me like other our comrades were killed. Uh, brutally. So that kind of voice is still there. I'm sure there are hundreds of people who have similar kind of problems, similar kind of suffering. So we have special team, staff team in uh, Humanist International who are actually looking after the right of those people. They represent in uh, UN, European Union and other international agencies. So those team are always working for the promotion or protection of the right of those people. Next thing we promote is FORB. Uh, I don't know how many of you know about FORB, freedom of religion and belief, uh, because just because you have different religion, just because you have a different belief or you don't have a belief, you don't really have a right to express your idea. You don't really have uh, an, uh, a right to uh, associate. For an example, it was very struggling for Bright to establish in India, and it is one of the issues we have to raise as a freedom of association. Because if you associate yourself as, a, uh, as an atheist, you have right to establish your organization as an atheist uh, globally, because the Human Rights Declaration gives that right. Uh, so we are promoting that kind of uh, right. Next thing is, we are also working with the humanist organization on capacity development, because we are working in very isolated area globally, like for an example, Bright is working in isolated area somewhere in, in a corner of, uh, let's say, India, and next organization is working in, let's say, in Nepal, in a small corner, but we need more networking and we need more capacity so that we can utilize our synergy to strengthen our movement. So we have special program for capacity development. We have special staffs working uh, for that. And even we have a committee in United Nations, I'm sure you know about that, which promotes the religious uh, and uh, relig four issue, like freedom of religion or belief. While we talk about belief, it's also about atheism, which doesn't believe. So we uh, have special uh, curriculum uh, developed uh, to train our humanist organizations uh, together with the United Nations. And networking our, is our key issue, like we try to bring all the humanist organizations globally uh, and uh, share ideas and strengthen their network. Next year we are organizing one World Congress in uh, Denmark. Many of you might have heard of it, so you are welcome to join that program where thousands of humanists from different parts of the world will come and share their idea. Uh, so if you, if, if you haven't heard of it, uh, I can share the link uh, to the bright uh, email, or you can go to Humanist International website, you will see uh, there. Other thing is, uh, we are currently working uh, so focusedly on protection of uh, humanists throughout the world. So who should be protecting the humanist? It is the responsibility of the state, actually. But state is actually not protecting their own citizen. So now we are working with the parliamentarians to make the issue very, uh, uh, to, to 
focus on this issue. We have invited some member of the parliament from, especially from South Asian country, and we go to some other country to discuss for three or four days, and we ask them to at least lobby our advocacy for the life of the humanists as well, for the life of the atheist as well. So this is a very important program we have been running. Uh, some of the member of the parliament from India, we, they said we are not allowed to uh, expose or share their name publicly, but we have invited some member of the parliament from India, Pakistan, uh, also from Sri Lanka and Nepal. Uh, so those member of the parliament will also be working for our right in, in uh, silently. So I think that is a big achievement we have recently made. So these kind of activities are regularly carried out by the Humanist International. If you have other ideas, if you have any more suggestions, you are welcome to give us feedback so that we can utilize it. Especially, I would like to request our humanist organizations, atheist organizations, free thinkers, or rationalist organizations in India to document or collect the evidences of threat or evidences of the challenges we have been facing in this uh, country so that those ev evidences we can utilize to lobby in UN and other international agencies. It would be much more easier for us to lobby because this threat is like life threat. It's not a small threat. So we have obligation to protect the life of each humanist there, being an umbrella organization of humanists. For that, I would like to request uh, any humanist or atheist organization and individual to provide uh, information so that we can lobby there. And next thing is humanist, humanism in India has a very long route, as I already mentioned, but I, I haven't found any collective archive uh, in, in uh, India. Let's say Kerala has a very, very strong humanist movement there, very deeply rooted, of course. Maharashtra might have a similar uh, movement. And if, you go to, if we go to other part of India, we have really uh, like very uh, deeply rooted cultural humanist value and practices and philosophy is there, but we are not really arch archiving them. Maybe it is the language barrier because India itself is like more than a continent uh, for us. Maybe someone or bride should collect all those, uh, you know, information, especially the booklets, bulletins, uh, biography of those valuable people and put somewhere digitally so that the coming generation can learn from them, which is missing. Uh, I think we have to take initiation on that. If Humanist International can collaborate in this issue, we would be very happy to collaborate uh, together with any humanist organization here. Also, Humanist International provides uh, some platform for international exposers. Uh, you are welcome to join us. Uh, there are some uh, scholarship or free ship we have provided uh, for the people who want to travel to different countries and learn about humanism. You can participate uh, on that. We are targeting more young generation in this, so younger generation are more welcome to engage in this. Next is we are very much engaged with civil society organization to draft UPR. It's called Universal Periodic Review. So if we need to write specific thing about India, you are welcome to send us more information, and that we will put in the Universal Periodic Review, and we will sit in front of the Foreign Minister or Foreign Secretary of, the, uh, uh, of uh, Indian government and discuss the issues with the evidence. And uh, that's, I think, a very important platform we can utilize for. Uh, yeah, these are the things we can collaborate with you uh, so that uh, maybe, uh, because Kumar Ji was insisting me to uh, list what kind of plan of action we can make to collaborate ahead. That's why I was listing those kind of issues. Now, for sure, the right-wing movement has been uh, growing not only in India, internationally, see what's happening in uh, Britain, what's happening in uh, UK. Uh, Right-wing politics is arising. But interestingly, as Professor Nayak mentioned, the humanist people are increasing faster than them. The recent census of UK uh, told us that 37% of 
British people are non-believers. This is the first time, this is the first time Christians in UK are in minority. This is the first time. And they are shocked. And you might know uh, about UK that uh, the uh, religious group or the queen is also a representative, a king is also the representative of the religion, uh, uh, sends the lords in the parliament. It is formed by the lords. And now we have started questioning, okay, those lords doesn't represent the voice uh, or the life stance of the UK because there are more people who doesn't believe in any god or goddesses. How, how can you send lords in the parliament because they don't pre uh, represent our voice? I think this is very strong voice and now slowly the practice of this Christianity inside the parliament or their influence is shaking. So that kind of uh, like uh, uh, activities are going on internationally. So even in India, I can see right-wing movement is uh, you know, increasing. Uh, our humanist friends are in threat. But at the same time, the humanist value has been come to the light. People are talking about atheism and rationalism and free thinking. I think the organizations are more organized now. They are discussing now. See the example of Bright. Uh, it's the first time somebody was telling me in India that at least 30, 40 percent of our members are uh, younger than yeah, yeah, below yeah. below 30 or something. That's the average age is below 30, so that we are trying to maintain that average age because trying to involve the young generation along with we are presenting some new qualitative information and trying to attract new generation. Yeah, so that's, so that, that's really great achievement and India has that history and legacy and we can maintain it more the uh, right-wing suppression will arise, more the people want emancipation, and we are the one who em emancipate the society. See how there was a big suppression, and as a, as a result, India got the best constitution in the world, of course. No constitution in the world can say that it's a duty of people to promote the scientific thinking. I, I think our... Uh, uh, lawyer, uh, Asimzi also uh, mentioned the same thing. I can hardly understand Marathi, but I was just making my own uh, imagination. So hope that was true. So that was the uh, best thing. That is the best thing uh, India has got. And it is our duty to promote it, of course. So this is there. That, that is why uh, we don't really have to worry how much the right wing will flourish, but the constitution already is there. I think they will not have any gut or majority to change the constitution in this country because the, world, the global phenomena is very different. One thing I don't understand is, uh, especially in the context of India, there are many people who are non-believers. There are some uh, loose research happening. I, I just uh, read them. And there are many people who are non-believers and atheists as well, percentage-wide. Why are we not putting that particular thing in the census? We need to count our number. It doesn't matter if it is 1% or 10%. Even if we, we are 1%, let's see, it's the worst case scenario, in the worst case scenario, if we are 1%, even though we are 1%, we are the officially recognized minority. So on that basis, we can do more advocacy. So I think we have to lobby on putting our, you know, that, that question, whether do you believe in God or not, or whether do you believe in religion or not, in the, in the census question, so that that will lead us officially towards strengthening our movement and identifying more people of, uh, from the uh, humanist background. So these are the key things I would like to mention, as I have already told you. A humanist international is open organization. It's a strong organization uh, uh, in terms of lobby and advocacy internationally. We, pro we uh, publish one report annually, which is called Freedom of Thought Report. This year, State Depart Department of USA officially invited us in uh, Washington, D.C. to uh, uh, release the report, uh, which is an achievement for us as well. Sometimes European Union also invites us uh, for jointly re releasing the report. So international community and some democratic uh, countries are very much uh, interested to jointly work with us because the value we promote is a, is a, a hum value of human rights. We promote scientific temperament, which is the 
core value of promoting democracy and promoting science, which, which saves the people. While every religious organizations were shut down, closed during the pandemic, we were the only one who were going to the house of the people and saving people. So we are the one who have that capacity of samatkar. Our professor Nayak doesn't believe in samatkar, but that kind of samatkar of making vaccine, this is the only humanist people who can make the vaccine. If you were going to the temple or churches or mosque or somewhere, I think we, we were be killing, we would have been killing a lot of people rather than saving them. So we are the one in the field. I also work for the WSO and uh, there was a data, especially in the context of uh, religious countries uh, like India or Nepal or other countries, in, especially in Africa, that religious centers, temples and those kind of places became the center of spreading viruses. So that uh, we were asking governments to stop, uh, you know, close those organizations uh, till the pandemic happens, till we will not invent a vaccine. So I think those viruses are spreaded from there. Now, not only viruses, but also uh, all this uh, nonsense is spread from there. Also, of course, they have right to go to the temple or churches. We, don't, we cannot really stop them. But while there is a crisis in the world, we humanists are needed. We have to stop. We have to close their temples, and we have to go to the, uh, the house of the people with the weapon of science. And the weapon uh, of science can be utilized only by the rational mind and humanist thinkers in the world. So we are there to collaborate with you, especially with the scientific community, and especially with the journalists, especially with the lawyers, and also our friends, our network members internationally. Thank you very much for giving me time. Uh, and of course, next year we will meet again. Thank you. So, uh, Uttam was trying to elaborate the situation worldwide, okay, and he has given a lot of good suggestions. I would like to request Mr. Uttam, you can send a mail, uh, what you have talked, so it's an action plan, and I, I'm, I, most of the points I agree with you. So we will consolidate this data. Uh, just I will, would like to remind you, Mr. Patil is there, as well as Mr. Nayak Sarode also, they are having wide, wide security. So they are just talking very nicely, but they have to take a security. Without security, they even cannot work. So that is the situation. Okay, but uh, consolidate. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you are also a member. Oh, good. Congrats. <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, Apla session conclusion.